Good morning, it's Jonathan Barrett with the Week Ahead Report. Uh, it's currently uh, Monday the 10th of October, the current time is 7.33. Uh, it's the Week Ahead Report where we discuss uh, basically the week ahead, what uh, news we've got coming out, uh, what uh, news we've had, how that will affect the markets, and uh, try and pick up some uh, themes and a few trends uh, for the up and coming week. Okay, let's first of all address what uh, happened uh, Friday night. Friday night was a very important night, obviously, for those concerned about uh, continuing or the escalation of the chances of a recession in the States. We had the uh, US unemployment uh, non-farm payroll startup. And uh, as that came out, and we'll just have a quick look at that, number was uh, okay, in fact, a little bit better than expected. Um, you can see uh, average hourly um, earnings up 1.9, uh, average weekly hours 34.3, up a fraction. Uh, Non-farm payrolls, that was the big number, uh, up 103,000. Uh, the previous was only plus 57 and the consensus up 73. So uh, that in itself was uh, slightly uh, better than expected and uh, that uh, in my mind sort of uh, started to allay fears or fears uh, basically of a recession or impending recession uh, that uh, we have or what a lot of speculators are certainly saying. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we had quite a lot of um, uh, we had quite a lot of uh, reasonable news with the uh, Dow uh, pretty much unchanged on the night, but certainly especially volatile. Uh, let's just run through some other bits of news that came out. Um, uh, Merkel basically came out and said that they're going to do all the support they can uh, in terms of uh, uh, Euro leaders will do all necessary to support banks. Uh, another package there, and so uh, that's quite positive, and um, that should h help hold uh, the market. Uh, the interesting thing is that uh, we do have a bit of a reprieve on all the concerns that we have in Europe. Uh, global investors favour Romney on the economy, Obama seeks strategy for jobs plan, um, Republican candidate, that's okay. US corporate pro profit set for slowest growth, that is a major concern. Payroll gain in the US beats forecast, which is good we know. US retail sales probably rose. So we are actually getting some uh, relatively positive data uh, out of the states, we've just got to see how uh, Europe holds up, and there's, um, here we go, OPEC are likely to agree to keep output targets unchanged. Uh, we already know about that, uh, but uh, as we suggested, uh, they uh, will be tightening them based on bringing the market back to normal as a result of um, uh, the freeing of uh, Libya. Okay, uh, let's have a good, uh, quick look at uh, the markets and look at the world indices to say where it's got a, a good set. and. Uh, Dow Jones was down 20, S&P was down 9, NASDAQ was down 27, uh, top 50 was up 20, FTSE up 12, CAC up 20, and DAX was up 30. Uh, all relatively uh, muted there uh, in terms of uh, the market. Markets perhaps not too sure, but uh, we're still looking for lead uh, out of Europe. Uh, the local futures are down 26, uh, 41, 50, certainly after that mediocre rise we had the last two days, are very encouraging. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the uh, general commodity prices. Uh, general commodity prices, uh, crude oil, uh, 105.88, uh, West Texas, 82.98. Uh, no surprises there. It's something that we had looked for and mentioned in quite a few of the reports. Other, some of the other commodities, uh, a little bit under pressure. Corn was down, wheat was down, and, of course, uh, soybeans were down as well. Uh, we are getting some good areas on all those grains, so uh, keep close to the tweets on that because I start to think we're getting very close. Cobb had a strong night, up to 327.30. This is a... Rallying an overall bear market at the moment, so we can expect this uh, to extend to about 350, 360, but after that probably see some selling pressure. Gold down $17 at 16.35, uh, and uh, silver are down uh, 3.16 at 30.99. So that in itself I think is uh, quite interesting. Moving over to the currencies, there's a the dollar index chart there, and uh, this correction here, pretty much like a lot of these, um, let's just see if we can get a little bit more data there. Uh, let's try and see if I can draw a trend there. I can't get a trend there at the moment, but uh, anyway, something to do with uh, software anyway. But uh, as you can see, as long as we stay above that area, 78.50, probably chances are we test the top side. So uh, that should provide more strength for the dollar. Uh, the Aussie Battler, 97 to 39, obviously quite a large correction off those lows. Um, probably expect a move back to 96. I don't mind that move back to 96. It's 
perhaps an area to uh, get involved. <clears throat> On the euro, 133.70, and uh, as you can see there, the trend continues. I mean, it's, uh, it is an interesting trend there. Um, euro continues to weaken. Let's see what sort of con the lead we do get out of Europe, but uh, as you can probably appreciate, uh, still got lots of concern there, but uh, we've got a little bit of a relief rally uh, going at the moment. Okay, oops, just got a little bit of a technical issue there. Uh, for some reason, oh, there we are, we're back, which is good. Okay, so that's the euro, uh, gold, uh, 1636 back, just a fraction. As long as it stays above that 1600, uh, we're quite comfortable with that. And or if it takes out this high at 1665, then we're comfortable that it should trade higher. Crude oil, no real surprises. As we know, we did get that draw in uh, infantries. That certainly helped the market, 8284, and that's holding onto those gains quite nicely. Looking to test that trend line. Let's see what happens, but I don't mind to see it lower, but only lower to have another look behind it. Copper, we mentioned, I uh, had a good strong move, a relief rally, in fact, and uh, that relief rally there, probably expect some sideways consolidation back down to 320 before trying to press up to 360, and uh, that should actually occur. I've also got China coming back from break, so I might see a little bit of demand. Now, just have a look at the grains, because I think the grains in themselves are starting to look as if they are right on lows. There hasn't been any signal yet, but I want to keep an eye on it. That's it there, the hourly chart, which looks quite good. And uh, I think that uh, we're getting close to the bottom down there, so uh, just keep uh, an eye on that. Now, let's go through the economic calendar. That's what the week ahead reports uh, pretty much uh, goes through. Let's have a look at some of the data, uh, which uh, is due. And we've just got a small little technical hitch there. If that uh, doesn't fix itself, we'll, uh, we'll move on. Okay, still a little bit of an issue there, but uh, let's move on to the FX Street one. Um, obviously today we've got, uh, of the new China FDI, which will be quite important, We've got Columbus Day in the States, so I expect things to be relatively quiet. Trade balance in Germany. On Tuesday, uh, business conditions, money supply in China. They're pretty important. Manufacturing data in the UK is pretty important as well. So that's FOMC minutes. Obviously, we'll keep an eye on that one. On the uh, 12th, which is Wednesday, uh, Australian home loans. Um, I suppose that's United MBA mortgage applications, pretty important. Uh, coming into Thursday, Australia trade balance, we'll keep a good close line on that one. Aussie employment, which will be tier one data for Australia, uh, that's out on Thursday the 13th, and expect a little bit of a lift there. German CPI coming out is also an important one, so we'll keep an eye on that one there. Uh, trade balance in the States, pretty important, and also we've got the usual uh, oil data that comes out. Naturally, as we go to the 14th, we've got China CPI, uh, PPI and CPI, which will be keenly watched for those inflationary concerns, and uh, we'll have to see whether or not uh, those rates, the rumour is that they continue to come in, so that's quite positive, and we've also got retail sales uh, in uh, the States, which will be tier one there. Well, that's uh, pretty much uh, about it. In terms of uh, what we're expecting this week, it's going to be a volatile week, there's no doubt about it. Uh, stay close to it, and uh, happy trading, and we'll talk to you then. Bye for now.